is a message. This one is titled, How to Live Like a Believer. Okay, And it's actually going to be the beginning of a series um, where we're going to just talk about, for a few weeks at least, I'm not sure how long we'll go, uh, we're going to talk about how to live like a believer. Okay, And it's, uh, it's something I know that if you, if you get in on one message, you get on one or two out of this series, it's going to encourage you, you're going to grow from it. If you get in on from beginning to end, it will transform a life. I believe that. Okay? And as I'm writing and, and putting things together and I'm praying and, and hearing back from God, I'm like, you know what? This is the message for the body of Christ right now. Okay? And it's the message for this body. I believe, absolutely believe we are transforming. We're, at a, we're still at that cusp where we just keep taking little steps. And a few months ago, we did a, a series on growing up and maturing in Christ. Okay, and I got a lot of feedback on that. People were coming, boy, are you going to teach on that again? That's really helping me. And it did. There's people that lives were transformed through that where I can look at their life as a believer, as a Christian, and they were fairly immature, but they grew. They matured as a Christian by the end of that series. And I believe, again, that this is one of those that we're going to learn about how to live like a believer. Okay, And I'll get more into that in a minute. But first, let's open it up with prayer. Father God, we're... We're here in your presence, Father. We're here as children of God. We're here of uh, just people that have given our lives to you. And, and Father, we're turned to you now with a hope and an expectancy in your word to be able to hear what you have to speak to us. I pray, Father, there's a lot of your word, a lot of scriptures coming out today. And I pray that each one of them speaks individually to each and every person in here, Lord, and that we corporately then as well, then learn and grow together in a way that influences us to influence others, to impact our world in the name of Jesus. Father, we're giving you the praise for it and thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So there is a distinction, a distinct difference between being a believer and living like a believer. Right? And you have to kind of think about this. Living like a believer or being a believer. There's a big difference. Okay? There's a lot of people in this world that are commonly referred to as a Christian in name only. Anybody ever heard of that before? Anybody ever heard of that before? A couple of you. A Christian in name only. Okay? They're called a CINO for short. Okay? C-I-N-O. Okay? And it's a pretty fitting abbreviation or pretty fitting, uh, yeah, I guess it'd be an abbreviation for a Christian in name only, a CINO. Because in a person like that, you will see no fruit out of their life. Okay, I know it's spelled a little different, but you will see not, not much for fruit in a person's life. If they're just a Christian in name only, okay, you won't see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. You won't see the, the, the love of God emanating and, and flowing through someone who is basically a Christian in, in name only. Now, they may call themselves a Christian simply because they go to church. Okay, they... Uh, I don't know about you guys, I went to church growing up, I was a Christian in name only. I, I believed I was. I would tell people if they asked, you know, what are you, I would name the church that I went to, the denomination. I wouldn't really tell them I was a Christian, but I would name my church and say, well, of course I'm a Christian. I'm a, you know, and name it. Okay, and, and so simply going to church, we know, doesn't make you a Christian any more than walking into a garage would make you a car. Okay. Uh, be, because you go to church doesn't make you a Christian. Okay? Walking into an airport doesn't make you an airplane. Okay? It is something that you, you need to get that grasp on, that there's more to it than just going to church. And as a, as a young Christian or a young person, I wasn't a Christian yet, but as a young person, even going to church, week after week, my parents drugged me, I still was not a believer. Okay? I did not believe. I simply thought I was a Christian because I went to a Christian church with God that knowing about God okay knowing about Jesus knowing about the Holy Spirit okay knowing about the gifts of the Holy Spirit even knowing about the grace of God even knowing about the authority and the power that's been given to us by Jesus knowing about those things is not enough Okay, the devil, the Bible says the devils even believe in God. Okay, so just knowing and believing that he is real or knowing a little bit about him is not, not quite enough. I'll give you some examples, but just because I know somebody who's a pilot, my pastor's a pilot, my neighbor's a pilot, I know people that are pilots, that doesn't mean that I know how to fly a plane. Okay, just 
just knowing it is, is not enough. Just because I have heard about fighting fires doesn't mean that I know how to be a firefighter. Okay? Just because I know a mechanic, I know where there's a repair shop. We have a body shop right next door. Just because I know about them does not mean that I know how to fix cars or that I would even take my car to that repair shop if it needed repairs. Okay, just knowing about it is not enough. Okay, in all those cases, whether you're flying an airplane, okay, you're fighting fire, fixing cars, just knowing about it is not enough. For me, myself, I would still do an inadequate job of trying to accomplish whatever that is. Put me in an airplane, I got to fly one for about 10 seconds with my pastor, and uh, he turned over controls to me as we're flying over Laramie at six, seven o'clock in the morning, and the wind wasn't blowing yet, and we're flying over. He said, here, you take over control, and he does something, and all of a sudden, I'm steering the plane, and right away, we start going down, and he goes, oh, you gotta kinda pull back on that, and I uh, pulled back up. It was, it was pretty fun, but I did an inadequate job. Try to get me to land that plane or something, and we'd have been, we'd have been in dire, dire straits. Okay, so knowing about stuff, knowing being in, in, involved in it is not quite enough. Okay, I need to know the how-tos. Okay, I need to know how to do something. I need to know how to fulfill the job, how to fulfill the position, how to meet the requirements or the expectations before I'm ever going to adequately complete that role for which I've been chosen. Okay, if I'm so chosen to do those things. Okay, if I... Uh, started a job as a mechanic somewhere. I know a little bit, but not I don't know all of it, so I'd be learning. It's that process, okay? And us, as us, as a believer, that's kind of along that same line. Okay, now this, this train of thought is not a new one. Our Creator, Father God, obviously thought of it long before I did, okay? And He created this long set of, of rules and regulations and laws that was designed to show His precious creation exactly what His expectations were. Okay, here's what you do, here's what you don't do. Okay, here's my expectation. He laid it out there and said, this is the manner in which you will do things. Even the, the altars, the, the ark, I mean, you go through, start looking at stuff. God gave pretty specific instructions on the how-tos. Okay, so this thought that, that believers, okay, those guys were, were pre-Jesus, many of them, but even in the New Covenant, we're going to see that there's a lot of how-tos in the Bible. Okay, and there's a lot of this is what the expectation is. Okay, but that is, is being missed by many. Okay, under the New Covenant, of course, we know that we're no longer under those long list of rules, under the law, but we're under grace. Okay, which simply put means that the requirement for fulfilling all the laws perfectly in order to be right with God, in order to be righteous, was fulfilled in its entirety by our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, everybody say amen. Because that's good. Okay? For us individually, the law was our schoolmaster. Okay? It's what brings you to that point of seeing your need for Jesus. Okay? It shows people where you fall short of God's holy expectations to the point for many of you is where you reach that point and you saw your need for a Savior in order to be in right standing with God. Okay? And then you made that choice to call upon the name of Jesus. The Bible says, Whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? And so you've done that. Okay? And by doing that, you were then saved from the wrath and the punishment and the judgment of God. Okay? Jesus, even though He was perfectly sinless, never once violated a single one of these rules, regulations, or laws, He was punished for it. Right? Not telling you anything new for most of you. He bore the punishment for our sin. Okay? He bore the judgment on our behalf. And He took that in our place and said when He was done, it is finished. I've done what I needed to do for you. Okay? But it makes sense for us that once we come into this new creation, this, this new and righteous life as a child of God, when we enter into the place where we're washed clean by the blood of Jesus, that we would need to be taught some of the how-tos okay, of living out this new life as a believer. What do you do? How do you live it out? What does it look like? Okay, we all have, if you, if you think about some of the stereotypes or the, the things that people think of when you think of the, the goody-two-shoes Christian, 
Okay, and we start to put in our minds kind of what it looks like and what it doesn't look like. There are some that are not into dancing. There's some that won't have a, a, you know, drums in church. There's some that, you know, there's all these different kinds of things out there. So the only way to really narrow all that down and find out what it truly is, is to get into God's Word. Okay, and to figure out what God's Word says about these things. Okay, and that's where the how-tos are going to come from. It's reading the instruction manual. Now, if you get a new, anybody get a new phone in the last couple years or a few years, those things are complicated. You know, if you wanna, if you wanna get into them, sometimes you gotta actually read the read the owner's manual. Okay, a lot of them they build it in anymore. I don't know if you guys have got one, but I got one for my wife for Mother's Day, and it it teaches you right as you're going through. It's like, oh, now you need to do this. Now you need to do this, and so the instructions are kind of built right into it, which is kind of nice. If you get a new car. Hey, these new cars are pretty fancy. You know, you got to read up sometimes. Where's the button for the heated seats? You know, how do you open the moonroof? How do you, you know, play your stereo? Or how does it hook up to your Bluetooth on your phone? Or whatever it is, sometimes you maybe have to read. And that's what I'm saying. We need to get in and, and look at some of the instruction manual to know how to use it. Learn how to do what it's capable of doing. Okay, and that's where this series is, is going. That we're going to be on the next few weeks. If you have believed on the completed works of Jesus Christ, then you became a believer. Okay? So now let's focus just for a little bit on how to live like a believer. Because things change when a person gives their life to Jesus. Hey, like Margie said, she remembers the life of old, the pre, pre-Jesus life, and it was pretty tough. Okay? Anybody well, you know my testimony? And man, I just praise God to even be here today after going through some of the things that I did as an unbeliever. Okay, but things change. Just like I can, I can uh, believe in the moon, okay, I don't know exactly what it's like to live on the moon. Okay, now, I know some of you have been a Christian for many years, but there's still some growing to do. There's still some, you know what, some updates to your apps, so to speak. Okay, there's still some things that need to happen to be able to get so you fully understand and you're fully functioning. Because you know what happens if you don't update the apps on your phone? They quit working. They quit doing what they were designed to do. Well, it's kind of a lame example, but that's a, it's, it's the same with us as a Christian. If we don't update our apps once in a while and get our, continue to learn and continue to grow, we're not going to be doing and fulfilling all that we're able to do. Okay? I can believe that I'm saved, but it doesn't necessarily know that I, I know how to live like I'm saved. Okay? What does it mean? I need to continually go back to God's Word and find out. So let me start first off. How to live like a believer? Number one, you start by beginning with the beginning of your faith by being born again. Okay? Nothing new, nothing you probably haven't heard of. Many of you have understood and, and experienced that before. But you cannot live the Christian life of a believer without first truly knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Okay? You just simply can't. If you're still trying to save yourself, Okay, still trying to do good things to make God pleased with you. You're still going to church to try to make yourself a Christian or to make yourself worthy. Okay, fulfilling some kind of a checklist. Okay, then you're probably falling short of what God intended. You're still, uh, what the Bible says, yet in your sins. You're still under the judgment of God. Okay, the lost are going to be judged by God. If you're still dealing with life through the eyes and the, and the heart of an unregenerate person, okay, you're looking at it from that perspective and you simply cannot live like a Christian. You can do good things on the outside. There may be good deeds you can do. There's things that lost people will do to try to look good. But in reality, they are not living like a Christian because as a Christian, all things are done unto God in the name of Jesus. Okay, There is a big difference in the way that people live their life. That person is still lost. They're unsaved. They're not washed clean in God's eyes. Still under His wrath. I'll give you some examples. There was a, a Pharisee named Nicodemus. Many of you remember, and he inquired of Jesus, saying to thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay? It is the beginning place. It's the starting place. He goes on and Jesus respond, or Nicodemus responds in verse 4. He said, Nicodemus says unto him, 
how can a man be born when he's already old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the capital S, Holy Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Okay, It is the beginning place. It is the starting place. Later on in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto God except through me. Okay, Jesus said it very plainly. There's only one way to God. Saving yourself is, is simply something you can't do. Okay, It's an act of God that is done only when you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as Savior. Okay, It means that you have made a conscious decision that apart from Jesus Christ, apart from Him making you right with God, you are going to perish as a sinner. But in Christ, you are saved, made right, made right with God, and you're on your way to heaven. Okay, it's a very simple process, being born again. It's not something that takes a long time to do. I've shared before, my friend got born again on a mountain top in Italy by himself with a little Gideon's Bible somebody had given him. He read the right verse, and God convicted him, and he fell to his knees and gave his life to God right there. Okay? And for, for many of you, I know that you've had experiences, you've received of Jesus, you've given your life, been born again. But since it is something that is this important, it is the starting place of living like a Christian, I'm going to just ask, is there anybody in here that would like to be born again right now? Is there anybody that doesn't know? It's nothing to be ashamed of. If you, like I said, I went to church for 25 years. Hey, before I ever gave my life to Jesus. Is there anybody that needs to be born again? You don't know for sure? Okay. I'm going to believe then that I am speaking to believers. Okay, And so from this point on, we've got number one out of the way. Okay, and if you, if you later on, you're still questioning, come and ask me. I'll, I'll pray with you anytime for being born again. I know there's lots of people that would. Okay, It's just a simple process. So now that we know that we're all believers, let's get into some of the how-to's. Because okay, yes, we are saved by faith, apart from the works of or the keeping of the law. But James reminded us that faith alone, by itself, is dead. Okay, it is not enough, in other words. Look at this. James chapter 2, verse 14. It says, What does it profit, my brethren, though a man says that he has faith and has not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, and be warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. Okay, now these are not works to make you right with God. Okay, God is the only one that could save you. It came by faith. These are the works that should be evident in the life of the Christian believer. How do we live like a Christian? Know that there's something that is going to be happening, experiencing through your life, and the people around you are going to know that. Okay, I can't say that I'm an astronaut and yet never get in a space shuttle or spaceship or go to the moon or do any of that. I can't say that I'm a professional baseball player if I never step foot on a baseball field. Right? If, you, if you're a Christian, you're going to have works that come through your life. It's not a performance. It's not trying to make God pleased with you. It is as simple as God's love will manifest and flourish through your life, and you won't be able to contain it. That's where we're aiming at. I want to get to that point where we just walk in it and just step in day in, day out in the anointing of God and let Him do what He wants to do through our lives. Okay. Now, likewise, I can not say that I'm a believer, but never exercise my belief. Okay, Never exercise my faith. If I became a believer by faith, then I need to walk by faith. If I, if, uh, just say that. If I became a believer by faith, then I need to walk by faith. So living like a believer means exactly that. You will be living according to what you believe. Okay, Live according to what you believe. 
So it becomes very important what you believe. Okay, and that's what we're getting into. What do we believe as Christians? Okay. The Bible tells us that we walk by faith and not by sight. It means that you'll be trusting in God, that He is the one that saved you. Okay, that's number one, right? Gotta be born again. That comes only by God. So right away we believe that we are born of the Spirit by the, by an act of God, simply by faith in the completed works of Jesus. It means that we will be believing God to provide for us. We are believing God to make a way when it looks like there is no way. We are believing God to lead us when we go into a situation. We are believing God to guide us while we are in that, in the midst of it. We are believing God to open doors for us that He wants open. We are believing God to close doors okay, or to help keep them closed so that we can't or don't aim towards them or go into them. It means that you will trust in God and His Word above all else. That's the beginning of being a believer. We believe in God and His Word above all else. In almost every Christian church, they're going to have something called, people call them a doctrinal statement of beliefs. Okay? And in that, almost always, as the very first line of a Christian church's doctrinal statement of faith, it'll say, we believe that the Holy Bible is the inspired and infallible Word of God. Okay? You can look them up. Church after church, they have that as a very first line. The Holy Bible is the inspired and infallible Word of God. Even the, the famed online dictionary that I don't always trust, but it's called Wikipedia. Even that online dictionary speaks of the Bible and it says, its infallibility means that we can trust the Bible to truly communicate to us what God wants us to believe and how God wants us to live. To ignore or disobey the teachings of the Scripture is to contradict its infallibility. If to say, that doesn't apply to me, okay, as soon as we do that, we destroy the infallibility of God's Word. We believe that I know better than what God says. Okay? And there's a lot of uh, political issues that I could bring up at this point that really are outlined in the Bible, but people change them and say, it doesn't apply to me, or I don't see it that way, or I don't think that's what it says. Okay? But the Bible was written in a way, and I'll show you in a minute the Scripture, it was written in a way that it is a blanket. It is something that applies to all, whether you believe it or not. It is going to apply to you. Okay? To live like a believer, you will live according to and trust in the Bible, the Holy Scriptures as God's Word, not only to humanity as a whole, but you believe it is God's Word to you personally. Okay, When I read God's Word, it speaks to me. You know, I, know, I know you guys, you like to read the Bible and think about how it applies to your neighbor or somebody else. Oh yeah, I need to show them that Scripture. Okay, Been there. Okay. But the reality is when you read the Bible, it is speaking to you as well. Okay? You would not be able to see that, how that scripture applies to somebody else as well if you weren't able to partake of it as something that was God's writing to humanity, as it's written to you. Okay? The Bible is the, the very real word of God. It is God's direct word to all of us individually and corporately. And as such... God has made sure to make all of it, beginning to end, Genesis to Revelation, concordance not included. Okay, God has made sure to make... You guys are barely awake this morning. That was a joke. Are you guys with me? Hang on. Hang on. Okay, God has made sure to make the Bible completely and entirely reliable, absolutely trustworthy, and powerfully truthful so that we could all be totally dependent upon it for our daily living with Him. Okay, Everything we need, we didn't learn in kindergarten. Everything we need, we get from the Bible. Okay, We'll learn how to be a kindergartner when our parents read us the Bible as we're growing up, right? And then you'll learn a lot more things when you get to kindergarten. Okay, Bible is real. 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. Some of the took Bible questions are this one. All scriptures and speech from God's profitable doctrine for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, 
so that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The word of God is powerful. Okay, it is, it is very, very powerful, and it was written, given by inspiration of God. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20, he said, Know this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Okay, in other words, it's not Peter's thoughts about God. It's not you know, Paul's take on what he thinks God might have wanted to say to us. It is without a doubt God's very own word to you and I. It was inspired by him and put together in such a manner that it is complete, whole and complete for us. Romans chapter 15, verse 4, he said, Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, so that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, we can have hope. Okay, John 5, 1 John 5, 11, he said, This is the record that God gave us to us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He that has the Son has life, and he that has not the Son of God has not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Okay, so summing up God in, in what we have talked about so far this morning, the first two steps in the process of living like a believer are, number one, you first must be born again, having given your life over to God in the name of Jesus Christ, and second, that as a true believer, you will trust in God and His Word above all else. Okay? You trust in God's Word above what your bank account says. Okay? You trust in God's Word above and, and, and beyond anything else, any other circumstance. You trust God's Word when it says He will work all things together for your good. Okay? You trust God's Word when He says you are precious unto Him and, and you are a peculiar people to Him. Okay? Psalms 119, verse 105. God's Word says that Thy Word, His Word is a lamp unto my feet. Okay, it's a light unto my path. In other words, God's Word contains the instructions for you to follow, and then it illuminates those instructions. It gives you the correct way for the believer to live. He will point you in the right path. You ever see, I've walked at night with flashlights, you kind of want to stay where your flashlight is, right? Because it's a lot safer that way. I told you about the, the rattlesnake I came up on last summer and walking down a path at night going like this, and all of a sudden, brrr, it was right next to me. And it was just because I had gone back and forth with my flashlight on the path, but right off the path, about a foot and a half, was where this big old rattlesnake was. Okay? That's where I'm saying you want to walk where the light is. You want to stay where the lamp is. Okay, so if God's word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, I want to know what his word says because that's going to keep me in the right place at the right time. Okay, God's word contains the exact instructions for you to follow. Okay, it is as perfect as God is. Okay, with every detail of how to live like a believer written right into it. Proverbs 30 verse 5 says that every word of God is pure. Okay, every word of God is pure. There's no impurities. There's no wrong in it. There's no, it should or could be taken this way or that way. It is pure. It's in its purest form. And he says, He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him, meaning there's a place of safety and protection in God's Word. Okay, knowing it, having it, understanding it. Know this about God and His Word that He Himself said to us, in his holy scriptures, Isaiah 55, 11. He said, so shall my words be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Okay? It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. God's own word does not return to him void. Okay, So if it's in here and we know that this is the infallible word of God, we know that his word will not return void. And okay, we're going to talk about that more next week, about praying God's word and speaking it over your life. Okay, it's extremely powerful. We know that Jesus, our Savior himself, when he was confronted by the devil, and remember the temptations in the wilderness? He repeatedly put the devil in his place by saying, it is written. Right? And then he quoted something from God's word at the devil. 
He put him in his place. The very first temptation, guess what the devil was trying to get him to do? He was trying to get him to trust in something other than God's Word. Okay? And he tried to get him to turn the stones in the bread. You remember Jesus' answer? Okay, Matthew 4.4. 4. Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but we live by what? Every word of God. Okay, we can live on it. Okay, you can live on the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Eighty different times in the Bible it quotes, It is written. Eighty times. Okay, it is people that understood that what is written, the Holy Scriptures, are power. They are absolute. They are the complete and final end. Okay, and so they would say, remember, it is written okay, to do this and not do that. Okay, as a believer, when you're confronted by the enemy, or you're confronted with some dire circumstances, something doesn't look right, doesn't feel right, doesn't seem right, or you're in need of hope, you're in need of health, you're in need of some provision in your life, you're in need of anything, you will find the solution in God's Word when you're looking for it. You say, Father God, I need your Word. I need your Word on this situation. He will give it to you. It's in there. Okay? He will speak it to you. He will give you that thing that gets in your heart that says, believe this. Okay? Live like a believer. Believe the Word of God. Stand on it and believe that it is true above all else. Because when the devil starts trying to convince you that you're no good, okay, that you're a failure, you're not going to succeed, you can put him in his place by reminding him, hey devil, it is written. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. Okay? When the devil tries to convince you that you're unworthy, Maybe he'll try to tell you that you're not saved. Maybe he'll try to tell you that you're not good enough for God. That what Jesus did wasn't enough. Okay? You can remind him, hey devil, it is written, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am a new creation in Christ. I am made new because God's word says, it has been ma- I have been made new. Okay? All things are become new in Christ. So when your circumstances come against you and it seems like they're about to overwhelm you, you can go to God's Word again and He will show you something like, no weapon formed against me shall prosper in Jesus' name. That's all you've got to say. It's trying to come against you. It's trying to make your life miserable. Trying to make it look like this is something too big for God. And you say, no, God's Word says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Okay, every tongue that rises against me in judgment, God will condemn. God will put that down. Somebody speaking about you behind your back, remember that verse. That's God's word. Anybody that speaks against you in judgment, God will take care of it. Okay, the Lord is the one that takes that vengeance. The Lord is the one that responds on our behalf. Okay, to live like a believer, we simply got to know God's word is the solution. Okay, we go to it, we live by it, we eat it up, we feed on it. When we need hope, we go to God's Word. When we have joy, we go to God's Word. Okay, when we're needing anything in our life, health, body, soul, mind, whatever it is, it's in God's Word. He has exactly what needs to be spoken to you at that moment. Okay, that's why it's not one sentence long, right? We can go to it. God wants you to get in and find that one thing that He is speaking to you, and He will bring, bring it to you. Okay? When you ask God to show me something in your Word, you begin to read God's Word and stick with it until it speaks. Okay? I know what it feels like, and it's a, it, you're reading along, and all of a sudden, whoa, there it is. That's what I was looking for. Okay? And God will speak to you about your situation, family situation, something else going on in your life, God will begin to speak. That's why it's called a prophecy. Okay, The scriptures were not written of any private interpretation. The prophecies of old were not written of a private interpretation, but they were written by holy men of God, moved upon by the Holy Ghost. Okay, We can believe it, that this is God's spoken word written down for us, that we can cleave to it and know that it is that solution. I'm going to stop us here for now, but get into it deeper next week. I want to look more at God's word and God's will. For your life. 
okay, and how they go together. Because if I want to live out my life as a believer, I want to live out the will of God for my life, his best and perfect will. I want to be in it. I want to be fulfilling that. Okay, and when you are, you find a place of peace. You find that joy. You find the satisfaction that so many are craving and searching for and going here and doing this and that, longing for that satisfaction. It is in when you're in God's will. Okay, so I want to show you something about His Word and how we can know God's will for our lives when we know His Word. And we can pray according to His will. We can pray according to His Word. And it begins to accomplish the things in our life that we have longed for for a long, long time. Okay, so that's what we'll press into next week. Father God, I praise you this morning that, uh, Father, your word is life unto us. It is the, the fruit. Your, your word says of, of you even yourself that in the beginning was the word and the word was made flesh and the word was God and it's Jesus. And that, Father, we know that we have you and we have this blessing that you've given to us called the Word of God, called the Scriptures, the Holy Bible. And, Father, I pray that we learn to to draw from it, that we may live from it more and more and more as we live out our life as a Christian believer. That we have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, we have put our faith and trust in Him, and we also trust in your Word that tells us about Him and how our faith in you accomplishes that much. Father, we're trusting in you, and I pray this week as we leave, let us have those encounters with you, number one, that, Father, we have encounters with you that speak deeply, that that cut through the the busyness of life, that cut through the doubts, that cut through the worries, that cut through the, the, the craziness that tries to come at us. And, Father, that it speaks deeply unto us in a way that reminds us of who you are, how powerful you and your word are, and how we are in it as a believer. Father, cause us to believe on that, to trust in you more than ever, and then influence the people around us with that trust. Father, it is powerful. I know it, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for loving on us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your power in our life, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.